Hello friends and welcome back to another Yarny update. This is the month of May. Uh, not sure how much I'm going to accomplish this month, but you know me, I have ambitious plans as always. So let's take a look at a finished object. So excited. So we finished the um, flat iron shawl. As you'll see, I added that dark gray to the shawl. Uh, and then we have this nice little pico border on the end that really stands out now like I wanted it to. Uh, and I'm very happy with it, so I have to block this. But let's take a look at it a little farther away if I can get you very much farther away. Okay, so you can kind of see it bigger there. Just goes around, so it's a nice size now. It comes down the arms quite a bit, and I really like the overall feel of it. It's very soft. I like the fact that it goes through several different colorways, and it's just very unique. And if you know how much time, if you've been here since the beginning, you know how much worry and time I've put into trying different patterns and tearing it apart. So it's really good to have it done, and can't wait to wear it. Another project we are continuing on is our Pluey Calm shawl. So let me show that to you. Let's see which side is the front. I believe that side is the front. So this is where we started. I started with a few rows of the solid color and then we went into the variegated. So I think that looks beautiful. I'm using stitch markers to mark every 10 rows so I can keep up with the pattern. I did alter the pattern slightly. This center part repeats several times and I just wanted more of the solid to show. So I kind of did a double of that part um, and then I'll have to like rewrite the pattern with my <laughs> row repeats from then on. And you'll see that the solid yarn is a little bit stretchier than the variegated yarn. So I'm hoping that when I block this, all of this waviness will come out. Another thing I'm hoping to work on this month is our colorful sunburst granny square blanket for the uh, couch. I like to have a couch blanket at all times to curl up in. Like even when the air conditioning is on, you get kind of cold or just a beautiful display on the um, on the couch. So we've got all of these squares ready. You'll see I've pretty much filled up the whole board. So I need to go ahead and start piecing these together in the pattern that I've laid out. And then we can make room to make some more squares. I do have, well, we have a 410 schedule over the summer which means that we basically work 10 hours a day, four days a week, and then we have Fridays off, which is a nice treat, but that doesn't start until next month. So I'm hoping to take those extra Fridays and have those be studio days, whether I'm scrapbooking or crocheting or making bags or whatever. So thanks for being here and let's come along on this month of May and see how far I get on all of these ambitious projects. I have my new project here <laughs> and excited to get started on this. This is the Tobago bag by Lion, well, it's by TL Yarn Crafts uh, and it's a Lion brand kit. So what I did is I ordered two of these kits in two different colors. What we are going to do, I believe, <laughs> is we're gonna go in this order. So this dark magenta is gonna be here and then the darker green, lighter green, and the pink. Um, yeah, I think that's how I'm going to do it. So I need a project bag for this, and I picked one out, but it was full of an old project, which we have to tear apart, because um, this was going to be a baby blanket, and it's a cotton yarn, but I'm no longer doing the baby blankets, because other than, um, other than giving the baby blankets I already made away as presents, uh, what I'd really like to do is make bags out of these so I can either make this same pattern but in a multi yarn like this uh, or I can find another kind of um, lacy market bag pattern to make with these. Uh, I've also got some baskets to try so what I can do 
you know, this is basically just DK weight yarn. But what I can do is I can hold two strands together and try and make a thicker basket, like with super bulky. So this is something I've been meaning to do is take apart. I've got two or three of these blankets started before I decided, okay, I'm really not gonna sell these. I like making baby blankets because I like working on the same stitch the whole time. But the cotton's kind of heavy, so it doesn't lend itself well to a baby blanket, even though I figured cotton would be a better material and safer for baby skin. It's just, you know, it's gonna be kind of heavy. So I'm gonna rip this one apart. This is a sugar and cream yarn in all the different multicolors, which I really like. So I'd like to be able to make something out of them. Uh, this one's more of a Christmassy design, so I'm not sure that this one, maybe this will be my experiment. So I will use this one to experiment with making the basket. A Christmas basket seems a lot smarter than like a Christmas market bag, but who knows, we're in Southern California. You never know. So I'm gonna tear this apart and I'm gonna steal the project bag that it was in to put this new project in. Um, I'm gonna try and figure this out. It's only got a pattern and you know me, I like to have a video. So I'm not sure about this one, doing it on my own with the pattern, but uh, she does have a crochet along at the end of this crochet academy that she's doing. So I have the yarn prepped and ready to go, and then when the crochet along starts, I will have to summon my bravery to do this one. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of us working on it. So I have the Facebook group that I can rely upon to kind of give me some hints and tips and tricks for that. So hoping that that goes well. Like I think I talked about last, yeah, last video, I haven't really been keeping track of everything. I used to keep like a little, like a mini journal uh, diary basically of all of my crochet makes and what yarn I used and what colorway the yarn was, um, what needle size I used, like what hook I used, and all of that jazz. So I need to get back to doing that. I think I will pick out a new journal because, oh, let me go get it. Let me show it to you. And I used to keep track of how much time it took me too when I was thinking of selling these items. Um, and I didn't really sell any of these baby blankets. But yeah, in the beginning I would, I would track the time and everything. Oh, and what pattern it was. So here I would attach a photo of, of the finished or the in progress blanket so you could see what it looked like. Like this was the Suzette stitch I did for a baby blanket. And it was a sugar and cream yarn, and it was gray, yellow, and white. I didn't write down the colorway. This one is a sugar and cream called Ahoy Ombre. It's one of their cones. But then I started putting in the bags I was making as well. So I feel like I need to start a new journal that just has the crochet project. So. I will start that over again and anything like this like the market bag I'm thinking of selling I'll definitely keep track of my time I mean crochet projects your time you can't really get reimbursed for your time at least not more than two dollars an hour I mean you're basically getting reimbursed for the materials and because you like making things I don't think I'm gonna be able to charge like the three hundred dollars it would cost if you were paying me for the time I was working on it. Plus, I tend to work on it in front of the TV, so it's not really like work, you know what I mean? So, very excited to get started on this in addition to everything else, but I think I will make this one next because I'm excited about the possibility of selling crochet products in the shop. So, in the shop, also for craft fairs, I think they would be really striking. So we've got this kind of market crocheted bag. Um, I also was thinking of doing granny square bags. I'll put a picture up here of the one I would like to try because it's really pretty as well. And then I was thinking of baskets. I have a lot of that sugar and cream cotton yarn, which um, I, I don't know, it just doesn't feel great against your skin. But if I held it two together, 
I could probably sew like a whole crochet basket like one of these. So I'm excited about trying all of these things that I could be selling in my shop. So we'll give these a go in between all of the other makes that I've got going on. <laughs> So that'll be nice. So I'll start keeping track of this. I technically have a Ravelry page, so I mean, I guess this is kind of overkill except for it's a nice hard copy that I can take pictures of. If I'm giving something as a present, I can take a picture before I give it as a present, and that way I have it. And yeah, I should technically um, recreate all of this on Ravelry as well. I do have it on Ravelry. But sometimes it's just nice to like have the colors. I, um, I could take a picture of the actual skeins of yarn before I start. Not that the color is going to be true, so that's, yeah, that's probably not going to work as well. But um, yeah, I just like having it in this format if I ever stop using Ravelry or anything. And I don't know if it's got a place to put what size hook you used. I'll have to check that out because it would be good if I could do that. And then you kind of want to alternate pages. So you don't want all of your pictures to be on one page. Um, for this one, I'm not going to keep track of, of how much time it took, but I should make notes about the fact that... Um, the fact that I'm kind of altering the pattern here, that I've done a few rows of the solid first, and then I switched over to the variegated. So like that kind of thing would be nice for me to note for myself for future, for future Heather, to know what the hell I did. <laughs> so we'll do that and then we'll log in this pretty one. Now this one, uh, I do want to keep track of my time and I'm not going to, I don't know, I don't know if I should keep track of my time or not, because I feel like, I don't know. I don't really want to track all of my time because I could be working on this at a doctor's office or, you know, like sitting on a flight and I'm not really going to write down all of the times that I spend doing that. You know what I mean? So I don't know if that's a good idea or not, or if I, or if I'm just like, okay, this is a ballpark. But you know, a lot of the times when I do my pricing, I look up what other people are charging for a similar product, and I kind of throw out the top, the you know, the most expensive price and the least expensive price, and I kind of look at the the average, the middle prices, and use those as my guide. So. Maybe I don't need to worry about that. And then I have to remember which, which colors I'm doing here. Do they have names? They do have names. Okay. So we have which ones together? So let's do the first one. Isn't this pretty? Um, I think I got these at Michael. You know how Michaels and Joann's always have stuff on the 
your waiting to check out aisle. Um, had a bunch of journals and I really loved this one and this is the right size for me to be able to put photos in. So looking forward to filling that up with projects. So that's it for this month. As per usual, my big dreams and goals for the month <laughs> did not pan out as I thought. So let me show you where we got this month with all of our yarny projects. So yay, a finished object, which was finished last time. It just wasn't blocked. So we've blocked this now. So I can wear it to work, which is nice. It's um, the flat iron shawl. And it's got four different colors in it. The only problem, I find with these uh, these triangle shawls is that basically by the time you get to the other part of the triangle it's like two different colors if you're not making it a solid color if you're making it in several different colors or a gradient then you wind up with this shawl that looks like two different shawls on two different sides <laughs> so that's the only problem with that okay so there's that finished object I can start wearing that to work it's still kind of drizzling in the morning. I always forget about May Gray. So I uh, still probably have a couple of weeks of it being drizzly in the morning. And then I never know with my office if it's going to be air conditioned or heated. So it's always good to have a wrap at work. So here's where I've gotten with the Tobago bag. I've made all three pieces now. So we have the two hexagons, I believe they are. 
And then we've got our bottom piece, which is a granny square. The only thing left to do is to weave in all the ends and then we can start assembling. So basically what's going to happen is these two are going to go like this on the ends and then this is going to attach to the bottom. So you can kind of see the shape of what that's going to look like. And then after we join those together with a blanket stitch, then we're going to do a few rows at the top and then there's a handle. So almost done with that. Only, only problem for me is that people on the um, TL Yarn Crafts uh, Facebook group have been talking about lining their bags. Ugh. And I hadn't even thought about lining the bags and I feel like, well now I feel like I have to line the bags <laughs> because it makes more sense, it's more practical. I could have a lining with a pocket, but then it's like figuring all of that out and that's not part of the pattern, I don't think. Let's take a look at the pattern. I don't think she talks about any of that. Yeah, she doesn't talk about any of that. So I'd have to figure out a size for the lining, build all of that, um, hand sew it into the top to attach it to the crochet part, and I, I don't know. <laughs> the whole joy of making these crochet bags for me was that they're very boho, they're very much throw your stuff in it and go, but yeah, I can see how lining would be much more practical, plus it just elevates the bag, which brings it up to the level of the other bags that I make. And yeah, it makes more sense, so I'm just kind of bummed. So I'll make this whole bag first so that I can finish the crochet along, and then we'll look into how we can make a lining for it. Wah, wah. So it just increases the amount of time and money I have to charge for these. But with the crochet bags, uh, I wasn't really planning on including my time in there, and I totally forgot to write down my time for this in the journal I just started. So I do have the other kit. I could track my time on that one, but part of me is like, you never get your time back on crochet projects. So I think I'm just gonna look at what other people are charging for the Tobago bag and do my pricing based on that and just go, go from there because it's something that I'm basically spending my couch time doing and I love crocheting. So it's not necessarily gonna translate to the actual cost of what I would have to charge for the bag. And it's quite depressing to think about that. So we're not gonna think about that. We're just gonna price based on what the market is actually selling them at uh, and what people are actually willing to pay for them. I just think it would be nice to have a variety of bags in the shop. So that's what I'm gonna do there. Didn't even get to the sunburst <laughs> granny square blanket at all. So we'll save that for June. I do have three day weekends in all of summer. So hopefully be able to spend some more time working on that blanket, laying it out, getting it partially put together. Uh, once I do the blanket stitch for this, I can use that same stitch for putting the squares together. So that would be good practice for me. And then I still have to make the rest of the squares for the blanket, but it is a beautiful, you know, springy, summery, very bright blanket that I would love to have on my couch over the summer. So we'll continue plugging away on that. And as always, I would love to thank you for coming and spending time with me this month as we take this journey and all the yarny projects. I love sharing these with you and I love having you in the studio with me. So thank you very much for coming and I hope you have a wonderful month ahead until we do another yarny update. Love you. Bye.